Okay guys, welcome back to another video coming to you from Sweaty TK MMA in Dubai. Today's video, I'm gonna be going over the top eight exercises we need to build a complete physique. Kind of talking to men only here, but I'm gonna go over each exercise, talk about why we need it and why it's so important to build a complete physique. I spent years and years doing stupid exercises and wasting time, not trying to increase lifts and all that stuff. And I've learned a thing or two along the way. So I'm gonna take you guys with me today and go over everything and hopefully Hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Also, whilst we're here, like, subscribe, comment, anything you want me to film, let me know because I'm desperate for views and subscribers. All right, let's go. Okay, guys, so these eight exercises we're looking for, we have a horizontal push, vertical pull, horizontal pull. We have some form of a dip. We're gonna have a hip hinge. We're gonna have a squat pattern movement, and then we're gonna have a lateral raise, okay? No arms in there, but I'm kind of gonna explain why. I'm pretty sure if you take all exercises I'm about to talk to and add 50 kilos to them, except for the lateral raise, over the next two to three years, you would have a lot more muscle on your body than you have now. So let's start off with a horizontal push. So first exercise is gonna be horizontal push, as I've said. I've chosen an incline dumbbell press to be a movement that I would like to progress for years to come. I've tried it all. Flat bench press, incline bench press, flat dumbbells, machine presses. I'm choosing an incline dumbbell press between kind of 30 and 45 degrees, not too high. Any higher, too much shoulders come in, but we do want it slightly angled for that upper portion of the pec. I've chosen dumbbells over barbells. I've seen countless pec tears with flat presses. We've all seen that viral pec tear with Ryan. Dumbbells, unilateral, both arms together, more range of motion, more comfortable on the joints. It is the GOAT of pressing, that's our movement. Okay, exercise number two is gonna be the classic vertical pull, pulling anything down here. Now, I'm a big fan of the chin-up, okay? We have neutral grip, we have chin-ups, we have rings, but if you're a bit more of a beginner, you'd obviously start with a pull down and work your way towards maybe an assisted chin-up or a chin-up, but again, if you want to have a great complete physique, if you end up doing chin-ups with 40 kilos, attached to you for sets of six to eight, your biceps and back will be very, very developed. Huge fan of this, similar to the weighted dip for your arm development as well. But again, you just don't see people who are very, very strong in this movement with terrible physiques. Okay guys, exercise number three is gonna be the parallel bar dip. Again, it's another pressing exercise. You'll notice I don't have an overhead press in these ex eight exercises because I don't really feel like we need it. We get a lot of shoulder activation in any press, the dip and the incline press. Anytime you pull something towards you, if your elbows are flared, you're gonna get your rear delts in, and we have a lateral raise in for our medial head of the shoulder. I'm not a big fan of overhead pressing. I've had a few injuries. Now, there's no arm training in these eight exercises, but find me somebody that can do a parallel bar dip with 60 kilos and a weighted chin up with 40 kilos that doesn't have well-developed biceps and triceps. So I'm a huge, huge fan of this movement, which is why it's in as our third movement. Okay, guys, exercise number four out of our eight is gonna be some sort of a row variation. Now, here I've got a barbell row. I don't mind a barbell row, a T-bar row. I'm I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to building a complete physique, I do like a row where we're standing and it puts a little bit of load on the back. Again, find me somebody who's a very strong barbell rower or T-bar uh, T rows a lot of weight that doesn't have a big upper back and also a big trunk lower back and it's just got a lot of mass. Of course, we have the seal row, which I love, the seated row. Any sort of cable row where it's back supported, that's gonna be great. I do both of them, but if I had to pick one to build a complete physique, especially if I was a beginner, it would be something where I'm over in this hinged position because my abs, everything has to brace to lift this weight, okay? But ideally, you'd put both in the plan. But exercise four, a barbell or a T-bar row. Five is going to be a lateral raise. This is the last out of the five upper body movements. Like I said before, we get a lot of front delt and rear delt in pressing and pulling movements, but anything with lateral abduction where you bring in the arm uh, this way doesn't really get hit, this medial delt. So I'm a huge fan of a lateral raise to kind of complete your physique. Everybody wants big rounded shoulders like this, okay? Now, lateral raise, cable raise, cuffed Y raise, all of this, it's all the same stuff, okay? I don't wanna get too overcomplicated with it. Let's just stick to the old fashioned lateral raise Sometimes you forget your cuffs. Sometimes the cables are busy. You're always gonna have a set of dumbbells, okay? High, high, we'll talk about rep ranges afterwards, but always 15, 20 with the laterals. Nice high rep range. The shoulders tend to respond very well to that higher rep range. One thing to think about as well, guys, is form. It goes without saying, form over weight. You have heavy weight, then you have exercise execution, how well you perform an exercise. Be someone in the middle. 
Don't be this guy with the two kilo dumbbells doing a nine second eccentric. Train hard, train properly, but don't cheat your, don't cheat your reps. Okay guys, so that's our five exercises for upper body. I believe these are pretty much the only five exercises you truly need to build a great physique. Yes, we have so many different movements for chest, shoulders, all these different movements, but get strong at the basics and it will get you 90% of the way there. In terms of rep ranges and form, as I spoke about, form should be perfect across all lifts, across all rep ranges, from your warm up to your heavy set, from start to finish. Never sacrifice form and start doing shitty reps just to, just to lift more load. It's the, a great way to get injured. You're not gonna build muscle that way, okay? In terms of our rep range, we wanna get strong from anywhere from six reps up to 20 reps. Again, you wanna be doing those kind of six to eights on your heavy presses and rows, but with the lateral raises, those 12, 15, 20 rep sets, or even some drop sets thrown in are gonna go a long way. That's upper body done. Lower body is slightly different. We're gonna go through three exercises that you need to round this up. Okay, exercise number six out of our eight is gonna be a traditional squatting pat movement, movement pattern. Now, we have a barbell back squat, which I'm a huge fan of. I literally built my legs off barbell squatting for years when I was younger. We have a barbell squat, a hack squat, a pendulum squat, any sort of squat pattern. I much prefer this over a leg press, if I'm honest. Again, find me, anybody you know, that can squat three plates for 15 reps, doesn't have massive legs, I will wait, okay? Huge fan of this, again, especially for your abs, for your back, it carries over into everything, but you don't have to squat forever. You can eventually make that shift over to a hack squat if you just wanna target your quads, but if we're talking about overall leg development, this and the deadlift, nothing comes close. One more thing I just wanted to clarify as well, a paused squat. When you're squatting, pause at the bottom of the movement where the body is under the most amount of load, pause for a second and then come out there. Do not bounce out of the bottom. Same, when you're deadlifting, it's called a deadlift. You're moving dead weight off the floor. It's, it's not a bounce and go off the floor, okay? Pause at the bottom of your squat, the deadlift, reset of the floor you're going to get so much more progress long term and less injuries by doing it this way okay exercise number seven the old classic deadlift now high chance of injury just want to throw that out there okay you do not have to do a barbell deadlift off the floor we have a traditional deadlift if you're a little bit more of a beginner we have the trap bar or the hex bar deadlift where the torso remains a little bit more upright big fan of this as well we have a stiff leg deadlift and then you also have your rdl's romanian deadlift it is all the same stuff other than the hex bar it's different when the torso is more upright again find me Someone that deadlifts four plates, five plates, doesn't have huge hamstrings, huge glutes, huge back, huge grip strength. We have to be careful with this movement. I was kind of a bit hesitant to put it in, but I'm a big fan of a stiff leg deadlift, which just comes off the floor, which I'm gonna show you in a second. If you can get very strong at this, very strong with a squat movement and then some sort of a lunge pattern, you're going to have great developed legs, okay? It's, it's pretty much that straightforward. You can do hamstring curls, leg extensions, hip adduction, all this stuff all day long, but you're never gonna have a complete physique unless you get these guys up to a decent standard. Okay, so the eighth exercise out of our complete eight is gonna be a single leg exercise. Something unilateral, think a split squat if you're a beginner, think Bulgarian split squat if you're a little bit more advanced, or walking lunge, okay? Great for knee strength, great for ankle mobility and stability, great for your glutes as well. It's a slightly different twist on a squat and a deadlift. These these three exercises in your plan ran over time whilst progressively getting stronger at, okay, are gonna lead to a complete set of legs. Again, I'm yet to find someone that's good at squatting, deadlifting, and lunging with good weight that doesn't have great legs. Plus, not to mention the energy demand, the calorie burn, if you're trying to lose body fat, huge, huge demand on the body to do these exercises. Do a session of squats, deadlifts, and lunges, and look at how much you sweat compared to lateral raises, curls, and shoulder presses. Okay, so guys, those are the eight exercises I recommend that you get stronger at over the course of your training career. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, you really want to progress these lifts over years and years. One thing I just want to elaborate on as well is if I've told you to do an incline dumbbell press as your horizontal push, but when you do it, you feel pain in your shoulder and you feel a much better connection from a flat machine press or a flat incline press, then that's your movement. We're all different and everybody's going to respond differently to different exercises. Over the years, I've found that an incline dumbbell press for me, my chest is cooked after that. That might not be the case for you. At the end of the day, find the movement that works for you and then drill that over time okay take these movements with a pinch of salt but these are the kind of movement patterns we're looking for okay you might not be able to do a chin up because it hurt it hurts your wrist but a neutral grip pull down completely cooks your lats hey that's it that's the one you push if you found this video useful or you want me to film more videos like this leave a comment and subscribe and i'll keep making them